Welcome to Lesson 1.5, Patterns and Relations. In this lesson, we're going to actually look at the patterns and relations in reference or compared in tables. You'll understand how to substitute numbers into a relation and how to create a table from a relation. You'll also understand how to use the pattern in the output numbers to write a relation, which is represented in a table. In this unit, we're going to introduce you to the concept of the input-output machine as they apply to a relation. This is easy to understand if you consider the input output machine we did grade 6. You should remember it. So we know that whatever we put into this particular machine, whatever number that goes in here, some math is going to take place and you're going to get some output coming out. Now if you only put in one number, you only get one number coming out. In a table, we're actually going to be putting in more than one number and you're going to get more than one number out and you're going to actually record those things in a table. So we know that an expression or a relation is a mathematical sentence using coefficients, variables, and constants. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable, the variable is the letter, and the constant is the number which is by itself. The input is the number you start with before you calculate the relation, and the output is the number you get after you apply a relation. So, for example, this relation is x plus 4. What's the output if the input is 5? You should have figured out that if the x is a 5 right here, you take the x out and you put the 5 in, and that gives you 5 plus 4. Since 5 plus 4 equals 9, that is your output. So if I had an input-output table, if I got a 5 here on the input, I'd have a 9 here on the output. We've used the grade 6 uh, input-output machine a lot, so we're going to move directly into the relation. See if you can calculate the outputs. Now, this is very similar to what we did when we calculated the area or of a triangle or of a square or of a rectangle. Just for a quick review, if I used the formula for a triangle, area is equal to base times height divided by 2, this would be what we refer to as a formula. Once I know what the area Let's say what the base and the height are, I can put them in. So I'll just make up numbers here. Say the base was a 2, the height was a 3. That's called substitution. You're taking the letters out, the variables out, and putting the numbers in their place. And the final thing you have to do is do the calculation. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So in this case, the area would be 3 square units. Now we're going to use this process but we're going to apply it to a relation. There won't be an equal sign. We're going to tell you what the x value is. So for the first one, the relation is 3 times x minus 4. The first thing you do is you write down the relation. Then you take out the variable, and you put in what the number you're told to use it, and complete uh, the rest of the, of the relation. And now do the math. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 take away 4 is 2. So you have relation, input, output. Sorry, relation, input, uh, substitution, and answer. Same as we did over here. Formula, substitution, answer. This is just a little bit different. We don't have an equal sign. We actually have a relation. Okay, let's try the second one, then I'll get you doing the ones on the bottom here. We know that the relation given is 2x plus 8. So the first thing you're going to do when you're given a question is you're going to copy down 2x plus 8. Now, take out the x and put 10 in its place. It's called the substitution step. So 2 times 10 plus 8. Now remember, when things are side by side, it means we're multiplying. So that's 2 times 10, which is 20, and 20 plus 8 gives me 28. So how am I going to mark this? Expression, substitution, answer. So this would be at the three marks. The next example I want you to do. This would be out of six marks. Pause the recording and see how much marks you can get out of six. There's three for the first one and three for the second one. Okay. You should be done now. So for the first one, x equals five. You put down your relation. You put in your substitution step. 
and now you work it out. 4 times 5 is 20, 20 take away 3 is 17. Relation, substitution, answer. Hopefully you got 3 out of 3. The next one is very similar. We're going to use the same relation, 4x minus 3, but in this case it's not a 5, it's actually a 6. So my substitution is going to use a 6, not the 5. 4 times 6 is 24, and 24 subtract 3 is 21. Relation, substitution, answer. 3 out of 3. So if I was doing this, I'd give myself 6 out of 6. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create we have the, the outputs from the inputs. This is the same as we just did for 5 and 6 on the previous page. Only now, rather than just having the 5 and the 6 as inputs, you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 as your input. You don't have to show me the work. All you have to do is make sure you get it right. So, to help you out, if I'm getting an input of 1, so 5x plus 2, you're going to go 5 times 1 plus 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 gives me 7. So if I have an input of 1, my output is 7. Now to do the same thing again, now we're going to use 2. So 5 times 2 plus 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Again, now to the next one. 5 times 3 plus 2. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. And you should notice that as I'm going here, I'm adding 5 each time. So I can continue this without having to, do any, having to do any more calculations. 17 and 5 is 22. 22 and 5 is 27. And 27 and 5 is 32. So there you go. I probably mark this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 marks. Okay, the next one I want you to do. Pause the recording. And I want you to put in the outputs when your outputs are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, using the relation 3x minus 2. So pause the recording and do this example. Okay, first thing you need to do, I always copy down the first couple to make sure I don't make a mistake. 3 times 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is going to give me 1. The next one, 3 times 2 minus 2. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Now, 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Now, you should have noticed that I'm going up by 3 each time. So, 7 and 3 is 10. 10 and 3 is 13. 13 and 3 is 16. So, if you did this correctly, you get your 6 marks. You do not get any work for marks for work. I'm going to get the marks from your results in your output table. Next one. Often the input and the output are going to be given to you. And we're not going to tell you what the relation is. That's what you have to figure out. The first thing you always look at is the output. See what it's going up by. This is jumping by 2 each time. Now, if you looked and you realized that for this one up here, when I go up by 3's, I was multiplying by 3. That means if I go up by 2's, I'm going to be multiplying by 2. So the first part of this relation is 2 times n. Now what you do is you get one of the inputs and try it. I'm going to use 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And I have to get to 2, so I know that this relation is going to stop right there at 2n. And if you go back over here and check the inputs, it makes sense. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8, and etc. So you've done that correctly. Next page. Look at the input-output of this table here. Oh, sorry, this is for the last, the one on the previous page. It's sort of a summation. So you take 4 times, was it 4 times n, or was it 2 times n? 2 times n. So in this one here, it was just sort of cleaning things up with a little bit of a discussion. 
this is 2n. So it's saying look at the input and output and think about the input output machine did. In each case, the input is 2n to get the output. So note that the machine can only do one relation at a time. So what is done to the inputs must be done for all the inputs. So the relation in this case is 2n. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the next one. What's the relation for the following tables? Well, remember I told you, start with the output first. I want you to try and see if you can figure this one out. So pause the recording and give it a try. All right, you should be back. We're going up by ones, right? So you're going to multiply by one. So n times one is actually the same thing as n. Now, let's put one in there. If one, if n is one, but I need five, how do I get to five? I have to add something. I have to add 4. So 1 plus 4 gives me 5. So I'm thinking that my relation is going to be n plus 5. So let's go over here and check it out. If n is 1, 1 plus 4 equals 5. Plus 4 equals 6. Plus 4 equals 7. So you can see that I've figured it out correctly. So my relation is n plus 5. Sorry, n plus 4. Your job is to complete this assignment, page 27 and 28. Don't worry about this right here. Okay, off you go.